I'm going to begin this video with a spoiler alert. The subject matter of this video is the movie Being the Ricardos. So if you watch this video, you may get some information you don't want until after you see the movie. And I do suggest that you watch the movie, as it had some surprises along with things already known. Okay, you've had time to plug your ears and la 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 la. My name's John and welcome to another one of my videos. I'm often asked why I don't put more videos out or weekly. Soon, one day, I will. At the moment, I want to put out videos not usual or simple or already done. The points I'm going to make reflect the belief that the movie is somewhat accurate, especially since it has the blessing from Lucy Arnaz. So I wish to do a little commentary, critique, and make some criticisms of some items I noticed in the movie that wasn't actually very correct in the actual I Love Lucy episode that they do portray. Let's see if you notice any of my opinions and evaluations, and if you do, put them in the description box below. And let me know if you agree or don't agree or if you notice some that I missed. Because I have two videos in regards to this movie called Being the Ricardos, this video will center more on a critique of the movie, how it was presented as well as the set and its accuracy. No movie can be 100% accurate, but it will be fun to point out some of the shortcomings and the bloopers. As I sat in my seat in Lamley Theatre in Pasadena on January 9th, 2022 at 1.15pm in Theatre 4, Row E, Seat 7, the movie began and I had some anticipation because I have already done a video where I did a lot of research on Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz. I have also watched I Love Lucy since I was a child. I have the DVDs and have watched them repeatedly. I can even go into another room and hear the dialogue and I can picture every movement and expression in my head and laugh out loud, as I am sure many of you can too. In fact, I'd love to hear your comments about that down below. Well, I was expecting Hollywood to exaggerate or take some privileges. However, I know that Lucille Arnaz, the daughter of Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz, gave her approval of the movie. However, as some time has passed since she has stated that, she felt they should have taken a few scenes out of the movie. And it appeared that Lucille Arnaz had something to say in regards to the fact that the movie was depicted being a five-day week and they put everything in that one week when in reality it was over a course of at least 10 years but that's the movie business but I'm gonna go with the premise that this movie is at least two-thirds accurate when it comes to the characters so when I sat in my seat at the theater I grew anxious to find out how they depicted all the different parallels most of us knew about William Frawley and Vivian Vance their arguments and hatred towards each other so that was not going to be much of a surprise. Personally, I was aware of Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz's relationship being strained, but as the movie progressed, I was surprised at the extent of violence. Where the hell have you been, you Cuban dimwit? Oh, yeah, you see that, sir. Philander and bongo player. I was playing cards with, hey, I was playing cards with, no, no, tell me when it starts to hurt. I was completely surprised at the writers. I was very unaware that they didn't get along. That, right there, was funnier than anything you've written so far this year. <sighs> That's not, I've written plenty of fun. No. And I'm just as stunned that they were able to put out some real funny stuff when they didn't get along nearly at all. There seemed to be a power struggle between Madeline and Bob. She even gave Jess Oppenheimer some stress, according to this movie. Now, I did a bit of research before seeing the movie as far as the main actors' backgrounds. The modern-day Bob Carroll Jr. was played by Ronnie Cox. The actor Robert Pine, who is also playing the modern-day Bob Carroll Jr., was not in the final cut of the film. He would have been the only actor in the movie to have worked with Lucille Ball, and it was on the series The Lucy Show in 1962. And he is the father of Chris Pine, who plays the young Captain Kirk on Star Trek. 
Early in the opening, you'll hear from the actors who are playing the writers of modern day. The movie also begins with Walter Winchell first breaking the news that Lucille Ball was a communist. When the argument about Desi missing for 27 hours concludes with a misunderstanding of the photo in the newspaper, they begin to, oh, let's call it share each other. And with the radio in the background on Walter Winchell's program, Suddenly, Walter Winchell hints that a very popular Hollywood redhead actress is a communist. He's holding a secret session in California. The most popular of all television stars was confronted with her membership in the Communist Party. Wait! And that Wait! Wait! What did he say? He said the most popular of all commercial stars was was confronted with her membership in the Communist Party. Well, the movie changed some of the words around, and at the time, Lucille Ball, what she heard, she believed that they were talking about red buttons. While, at the same time, and in the same week, gossip newspaper called Confidential shows Desi Arnaz with another woman. And Lucille Ball confronts Desi about the article when Desi finally comes home after 27 hours. And it was here where I was completely surprised at their intense physical arguments, especially when you have something in the script that says, tell me when it begins to hurt. It's here I'm noticing set errors. During these scenes, depending on which storyline we're following, we are in March of 1952. I'm noticing that the floor plan of the ranch house, which they bought in March of 1941, the fireplace is completely in the wrong place. There is a hallway to the right of that wall, but there is no fireplace. The fireplace was near the rear of the house where the width of it went east and west, but in the movie, the width of it went north and south, and that is incorrect. As in this true picture with their couch against the east wall, and you can see the hallway around the corner there, to the right of that would be the fireplace, and beyond that would be south, which goes into their backyard. But with the couch, they are using to share each other. So behind them, is their backyard which faces south. Interesting, they're looking at the radio which is facing north, so everything's kind of twisted around. In other words, in the movie, where the fireplace is, that's where the couch should be. As in this photo, that couch is against the east wall, and to their right would be the fireplace, which also goes towards the backyard. The scene now opens at Monday's table read. You'll notice that the set being used is what most fans call the window set, opposed to the set fans have called the brick set. And the first thing you notice that's wrong is that they should have been using the brick set, not the window set. It is in some of these scenes I'm going to point out some interesting bloopers that you may or may not have caught. And if you did, I'd love to read them in the comment sections below. Okay, I'm not gonna point out everything, but let's take a look at the bedroom set on the far left. The wallpaper is correct. The two picture frames are correct. They even got the large frame around the wallpaper correct, which was rarely seen in any of the episodes, not in its entirety. What's interesting is this is the new apartment or the window set. And yet they're using the little clock that was in the brick set or the old apartment, which used to sit from time to time where the barometer would sit which is in the living room to the right of the kitchen door. And that clock was never seen in the new apartment. And when the barometer wasn't there, there were two oval picture frames. The scene opens with the actress Nina Arianda playing Vivian Vance is giving William Frawley, played by J.K. Simmons, a hard time. And William Frawley is basically ignoring her. Vivian in true life, suffered from bouts of depression and other disadvantages. Bill? Bill. Is she talking to me? Yeah. So she knows I'm here, she can see me? Yes. Did you know little Rusty had to sign a loyalty pledge? I don't pledge? know who the little Rusty is. Rusty Hamer from the Danny Thomas show. That's not his name. It is his name. The littlest kid from Danny's show? Yes. Rusty is the character's name, not the actor. They're both named Rusty. Rusty Williams is played by Rusty Hamer. And Hamer's a communist? He's seven years old. 
And he's interested in politics? No, imbecile. I'm saying he's seven years old and they made him sign a loyalty pledge. Uh huh. This is getting out of hand, was my point. Coming back to the set in the kitchen, here I want to give them some credit on a lot of the knickknacks they got correct, pointing out a few in that three shelf wall unit. They have the salt and pepper shaker, as seen in many episodes of the brick set. And off to the left, under the light, you'll see the white vase, also seen in the brick set, as well as the window set. And further to the left, you'll see the bread box along with the coffee, flour, tea, and sugar containers. Of course, that changed throughout the series, and the lamp hanging on the wall looks very much like the replica with the ship steering wheel. I also would like to give them credit for the original statuettes that sit on top of the mantel, and they did spend careful attention to the lamp in the window. Though most of us recognize the square shade imitation candle lamp and an antique lamp sometimes sat there, although it also sat over by the desk, as well as the two knickknacks on either side of the lamp sitting on top of the piano in front of the window. The next scene breaks to Desi's office, where the execs are discussing the seriousness of the claim that Lucille Ball is a communist. Miss Ball explains that she did it to please her grandfather who believed in the working man, pretty much like the unions in America, the working man's affiliation in Germany. It might be interesting for you to know that when Lucille Ball filled out the card for her grandfather, she was living in Hollywood in the bungalow on Ogden Avenue with her mother, grandfather, and brother. Now, the true story, she told them, that she registered as a communist in 1936 for her grandfather, who had raised her. That was the year her grandfather, Fred, held all his political meetings in the garage at 1344 North Ogden Drive in Hollywood, California. He had a friend running for city council on the communist ticket, and he insisted that her mother, Dee Dee, her brother, Freddie, and she register so they could vote for him. She did it to please, I quote, Daddy, unquote. And she further explains that back then, it wasn't any worse than being a Republican. She was nearly 25 at the time, but the story hit September 6, 1953, some 17 years later. She'd have been about 42 at that time. However, when all this came out, Lucy and Desi had been living in the ranch house in Chatsworth, California for a little over 10 years. Her family continued to stay at the Ogden Avenue address in Hollywood. Now might be an important fact to bring up that while all this came out, the actual episode being filmed was not Fred and Ethel fight, but the girls go into business, episode 68. Another episode with the brick set, not the window set. Another fun find, still in Desi's office, where they are speaking to their lawyer privately. Over his left shoulder, you'll see a photo of Lucy with Bob Hope in the episode Lucy Meets Bob Hope in Season 6, air date October 1st, 1956. Apparently still in her hot dog vending outfit. It appears to be a publicity picture taken in between filming, so that picture did not exist for some four years yet. Now, in this next scene, where Lucy kisses Desi and then takes his hanky to wipe her lipstick off his lips, although I'm sure this didn't exactly happen, but it does make for a very good hook later on in the movie. According to the movie, Lucy questions the fact that Ricky comes through the front door, and why doesn't Lucy hear Ricky coming through the front door when it's only 12 feet from her? I bet that she questioned many of these things that you and I, the audience, question. As an example, those times Ricky couldn't recognize Lucy in some of the disguises she wore. My guess is she did this probably on every one of them, too. Table set for four, but there's only three chairs. After a moment, the door opens and Ricky... And that is what the movie seems to be depicting. Now, the movie did jump around. It went forward in time, back in time. So we're going to fast forward to the set where they meet on Too Many Girls. And more specifically, where Desi invites Lucy to join him at Cyrano's, where he plays with his orchestra. And it had quite the history. It was on Sunset Boulevard. And here's what it looked like back then. 
and here it is today. It is the Comedy Club, and it is also just down the street from the hotel, which also had quite a history, the Chateau Marymount. Desi would stay there years later whenever Desi and Lucy would argue when living in the ranch house in Chatsworth, California. However, that's about one rumpus room and 10 years later. In the movie, coming to the scene in Desi's hotel room, at the chateau. The next scene is Lucy and Desi on the balcony. And for the record, whether it's the movie or not, the balcony is looking south. They did a very good job imitating the hotel. In the movie, they attempted to get that exact hotel as it is still around, but there was a strike going on so they had to make other arrangements. It is in this scene, Desi asks Lucy what her ambitions are. Was your Mm. Ambition. Dreams. What are my future dreams? Oh, I should have stuck with ambition. Okay. I live in a small house. And your ambition is to live in a bigger house? My ambition is to live in a home with a family and dinner time. Lucy wanted a home, which breaks down to this. She truly just wanted a family, a husband, and to do housework. Yes, she really did enjoy doing housework. Now we're on Tuesday's blocking rehearsal. Take a look at the clock in the engineer's studio behind the glass. Take note that it's 12.55 p.m. The movie moves to the next scene where Vivian's character, Ethel, is trying on a new dress supposedly for the dinner party she's invited to at the Ricardos. In true life, Lucy wanted Ethel's character to be about 10 pounds overweight and to never dress better than Lucy. And this is depicted in that scene. And in this scene, where you're seeing Ethel's character and Lucy in the same scene, take note of Lucy's blue jumper outfit. You're going to see something that, well, we're just gonna call it a blooper, and it goes along with the clock we saw earlier. Notice Lucy's blue jumpsuit. She's still in it, so you know it's on the same day. And if you check out the clock, you'll see the earlier blooper I was trying to point out. It's now 10.55 a.m., where earlier it was 12.55 p.m. This is when Desi and Lucy walk into the writer's room and tell them that Lucy's pregnant. Looking at Lucy's face, I thought for sure. I'm pregnant. We're... What do we do now? I know it seems like no one said congratulations, but that cannot be. Is this no, 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 no. You're you right. You're right. Sorry. Oh, it's yeah. wonderful yeah. news. Congratulations. Yes, That's congratulations. Back in the day, the networks would never allow a pregnant woman to be on television. They believed the public wouldn't accept such a thing. Up until now, I believe you think Lucy was the first pregnant woman to be seen on television, huh? Not so. A little-known television show in 1948 called Mary Kay and Johnny aired a pregnant Mary Kay Stearns. The show Mary Kay and Johnny aired from 1947 to 1957, and how they basically got away with it, not many people had televisions back then, so it didn't come up as an issue. They even shared one bed. Anyway, as usual, the network executives were wrong. I Love Lucy broke records that season with over 44 million viewers tuning in to see Lucy Goes to the Hospital, where the couple welcome little Desi Jr. on January 19, 1953. In the end, viewers ate up the storyline, which accounted for 72% of all TVs in homes at that time. Ball gave birth to her son the same day little Ricky was born for the show with a C-section. And Lucy Arnaz would be 18 months at this point. Desi didn't discover until years later exactly what had convinced everyone to back off and permit Ball's pregnancy on the air. During a visit in New York, he spoke with Lyon's assistant at Philip Morris, who showed him a brief yet strongly worded memo Lyons had sent out after Arnez had contacted him. The memo sent from England read, To whom it may concern, don't F around with the Cuban, signed A.L. Excuse me. What is it? It's a telegram from Mr. Arnez. It's from Mr. Lyons and Philip Morris. Hmm. Let's go, please. We are an hour behind. Yeah. What does it say? 
To all Philip Morris and CBS employees, don't fuck with the Cuban. Arnez recalled, quote, I almost fell to the floor. What a great old man he was, unquote. So that part of the movie was factual, but it was done just a little bit differently than in the movie. One of the other taboos around that same time, actors playing couples were never allowed to be in the same bed. They always had to have twin beds separated. You might have noticed that on Dick Van Dyke, for example. Later on, I Love Lucy pushed the twin beds together. The rules bent a little bit as long as the actors were married. Jumping to the scene where Desi and Lucy talk to the writers about stomping grapes in a wine vat. I can see it. The actress in the wine vat with Lucy was not a real actor, and she didn't speak English whatsoever. They told her she and Lucy were going to be wrestling. She went a little too far and nearly drowned Lucy for real. When you see Lucy come up at one point and she looks like she's taking one big breath, that's where she almost drowned. <laughs> She said she got the hell beat out of her, but it's one of her favorite episodes. As I said before, the movie kept jumping back in time and then going forward. The next scene, where Lucy is running down a street and enters a terracotta patio area with rustic bricks. When I was at the movie watching, I wasn't sure if they were trying to say that this was the Beverly Hills Hotel, but my mind kept thinking it's supposed to be the Chatchworth Ranch Home. And as the movie progressed, I realized it was supposed to be the ranch house. What threw me off was the set was terribly wrong. They didn't have brick or terracotta patio. It was just regular cement slab with a whole lot of grass. <laughs> and their backyard was not brick. In fact, most of their house was wood all the way around. Seems they could have done better at looking for a location. Like when you see the pool, it looks like it's a professionally installed pool, but their ranch house pool was more of a pond type pool that Desi built himself. Anyway, Lucille comes bursting into the backyard of the ranch house talking about getting a part in the movie called The Big Street, which is a 1942 American drama film starring Henry Fonda and Lucille Ball based on a 1940 short story Little Pinks. Agnes Moorhead is also in it. Shortly after its run with the public, RKO drops Lucy's contract shortly after the movie and suggests that she goes into radio. We're dropping your contract, Lucy. Can I make a suggestion? Radio. The movie comes to present day Thursday's run-throughs. We fast forward from 1941. Take note, the unit number is 3B instead of 3D. You'll remember they moved from 4A to 3B. Later, 3B was changed to 3D. 3D was used in Lucy Tells the Truth, Season 3, Episode 5. You might remember that she had to use the term 3D to give the impression of third dimension. I was in 3D. <laughs> You say you appeared in third dimension. No, sir, I did not. I said I was in 3D. Well, what's 3D if it isn't third dimension? It's a number on our apartment. I love Lucy. It never gets old. Well, that's the last of the bloopers. That's all I have for you this time. I truly hope you enjoyed the video. There are more classics and bloopers to come, so maybe subscribe or drop a comment in the description box below or leave a thumbs up. And in the meantime, I'll see you in the next one.